Hello and welcome everybody to Cardboard Cast. Uh, I will be your host this evening, morning, afternoon, throughout however long this takes. It's going to be a while because they started at Swiss Round 10. Uh, my name is Echi. I am a uh, Pokemon speedrunner and TCG player as well. I'm being joined here by Victor Ong. So Vic, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm a TCG player. I've been playing on and off for a long time, since about 2006, 2007. Um, have recently got back into the game a couple of years ago, have a couple top finishes, um, but I'm also an aspiring caster, so happy to join you here today, this morning, Awesome. Ashi. Yeah, I'm really excited because uh, not only are we going to be here for a while casting a bunch of games, but also uh, some pretty exciting games to start off here. Uh, before we jump into the games, though, just kind of a rundown of how this is going to work. Uh, this is a rebroadcast of Leal Regionals. Right now, Leal is in the process of their top cut or about to start top cut. Um, we are basically rewinding back in time for everyone who lives in America or on the west side of the world and was asleep for all these rounds because there was some cool stuff that happened and a lot of people were asleep for it. So we're here now. We're going to commentate those. Uh, we'll be playing them at a slightly higher speed just to kind of get through things faster. It won't be super noticeable. Uh, and we'll also just be cutting out all the breaks in between from like what you normally see in the official broadcast where they have to take breaks between games because there's actually hundreds of players doing a bunch of games at once. Uh, we're just going to cut through all that. So... We should be able to speed through pretty fast and get through a lot of games today in a short amount of time. And uh, before we get into that, I want to go over the uh, kind of the meta share for day one and day two. So, yeah, these are the six that showed up in Sacramento. Um, just. A week ago but some things have shifted around in order uh the the main one that stands out to me is guard ex is the most played deck versus charizard being the most played but i think people were expecting that heading into a european regional yes Yeah, I, I... It does look like um, you're muted, says chat on the slides. One second, chat. Thank you. Oh, this is so sad. It's the one scene I didn't add my mic to. Oh, no. That's okay. You covered everything important anyway, so we're fine. <laughs> All right. Now they can hear me. Um, but We were talking about day two. Yeah, we were talking about day two. The main thing that I was pointing out was just Lost Zone converting at a high rate. Giratina kind of surprising out of nowhere. Uh, not super surprising in the sense that people are still playing it, but surprising in the sense that it wasn't on the day one graphic at all. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it is kind of low sample size. It's less useful data than normally because the, the regional is smaller. So you can see 10% of the, of the room is eight <laughs> decks yeah. for Lost Zone. But it is still cool that Lost Zone as a whole converted at 30%. And actually bumped off Lugia from the the top five list. Which yeah, no I Lugia. That is in line with what happened to Peoria. Um, I th I imagine Lugia is probably still at the the eight percent mark or so. Probably converted. Probably at, just at a, barely at a off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would be my yep. guess. So yeah, uh, pretty interesting, and again, very much in line with kind of what we've seen. Just some slight shifts here and there. We'll see how that actually plays out in the tournament games we're going to watch today. Again, starting from Swiss round 10, that is the first round of day two. So I think we're just going to go straight into the game from here. Let me go ahead and pull we that up. We have a spicy one for you. Yeah. I believe. We were thinking of it not even starting at round 10 because it is early, but there was a deck that I really wanted to see. So here we are. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a... Uh, Turbo Lost Box matchup versus uh, Gardevoir, but it's not actually Gardevoir, it's Banet EX. So I'm super excited for this. We're going to go ahead and switch to the game feed now. Uh, 
you, you you seem to know more about what Rune was playing than uh, than I did. Kind of going into this, do you want to explain? Yeah, Rune is a, a good friend. I I hung out with him a lot at Worlds. He is, well, he was last season probably the number one senior in the world and the number one um, prospect, I guess, in his rookie year of Masters. Doing pretty well so far, playing that Turbo Lost Box with Spirit Tomb, with Echoing Horn, with Roxanne. I don't know which of those techs will be relevant, if at all, in this matchup specifically. It's not one that I know very well, um, but but that's what's on Rune's side of the field. Do you do you want to talk a little bit about what he's <laughs> playing? Yeah, I can. The deck list? Uh, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. I can kind of go over what the Banet EX does for those who don't know. And yeah, they're, they're repping the Halloween Shuppet. Very cool. But for those who don't know, Banet EX is a uh, psychic EX Pokemon with 250 HP. The It's got two gimmicks with each of its attacks. So its first stack, Everlasting Darkness, uh, during your opponent's turn, they can't play any item cards from the hand. So this is an item locking card giving uh, to the power to just do some very powerful item locking and preventing their opponent from playing things. And it turns out in Turbo Lost Box, item lock is, is pretty strong against it because uh, you like to play a lot of items. You like to switch things around. Can't really do that uh, with that Everlasting Darkness effect. Uh, Bennett also has another attack. I'm not sure how often this will come up uh, called Poltergeist. So does 60 damage for each trainer card you find in your opponent's hand. And yes, they reveal their hand. And he, they're just starting with spamming as many Shuppets down as they can. I don't know what the Shuppet actually does. Let me pull that up as well. The Bonnet line is interesting too, because there is another Bonnet in the deck, not just the Bonnet EX, that is useful. So it's one of those cases of, of a split evolution line, like Gardevoir, for example, where you can you can do multiple things with their Shuppets. The other Bonnet lets you search your discard pile for a supporter, and you put it into your hand, kind of like that Pelipper. If, if anyone's watching from Cardboard Clash, it's very similar. <laughs> the difference is that Bennett puts itself in the Lost Zone, which sounds like a disadvantage, but actually it isn't because the deck also plays Sableye. So in, in a way, it's still a Lost Zone deck. Oh, wow. Yeah, this deck is super interesting then because you have the Gardevoir to help with your energy acceleration. You have Sableye too. Jeez. It's really neat for sure. And I think the fact that Matus went first and was able to get all those Shuppets down and Rune is starting that Manaphy, I think the the cards are in line for, for sure. Matus to, to take a, a quick game one. Well, as quick as Bennett can can be, I guess. <laughs> uh, Hasui and Heavy Doubt Ball coming down for Rune, checking all those prizes. Grabbing the Spirit Tomb off with that. Uh, nothing too fancy there. Uh, still getting VIP pass with two of them. Prize is great. Was able to get that turn one. Colrus's experiment as well. So uh, looking okay on Rune's turn as long as these uh, Flower Selects do some work. Yeah, we'll see if, um, if Rune is able to get a really good setup off because that could entail potentially getting a Moonlight Shuriken, which would, I think, make the game pretty much over given that Matus only has four Pokemon in play. Um but we'll see. Maybe maybe you can bounce back with that with item lock. So um wanted to ask also just like general turbo kind of game plan against something like this. Uh what like you seem to be more aware of what this deck can do. So uh could you kind of go into detail what what how you would kind of approach this matchup? Yeah I think it would definitely have to be some trial and error if I was faced up against this at a regional for the first mm -hmm. time. Um, and looking at the deck list now, I think Matus had an older list with um, Sableye, but this one doesn't have it. So it's okay. actually yeah. it's actually using utilizing Shadow Rider, Calyrex V, oh, Mew geez. EX <laughs> as its as its uh, tech attackers. Um, but I think the way it works is you kind of want to turbo as much in the Lost Zone as possible as soon as possible because you're never going to get a chance to do that later and just set up as many attackers as you can with some options to retreat so if you can like start mirage gating turn one that's probably ideal right so that your comfies can never get locked in the active with something like that calamitous wasteland that matus plays um but other than that i i think it's a pretty straightforward game plan i i think it's kind of like the opposite plan you would have if you're up against a mill deck. Like a mill deck is a weird deck as well that you want to play differently. In a mill deck, you might want to save your resources, or a control deck like Snorlax Stall, you might want to save your switch cards. Whereas this is the opposite. You kind of want to burn them as fast as possible, get down 
to your your deck being thin get multiple cards in the law zone to activate your attackers and and whatnot right uh rune here getting another vip passed down throwing down the comb fan the kramer I'm gonna throw that up uh did get four in the law zone zoned a escape rope and i believe a gate already or no uh was it a gate can't really see from this yeah it looks like a, it looks like at least one gate yeah one, one gate, gate rod save one, lie. one rod um and is going to spit innocently and take the knockout and take a prize card so some progress there for rune and uh, what you're saying honestly reminds me a lot of what we saw from like vikavolt from pre from uh pre-rotation mm. where a lot of it is just like trying to play all your items down before the item lock is coming because you know it is going to come very soon here uh, and just being ready for that scenario. So, Matus playing down Luminion. Oh my gosh, throwing down all the cards, grabbing Ayana. <laughs> <laughs> Benet EX and the uh, energy coming down on it as well. Throwing down the Curlia and doing your refinement with that this as well. This is not a deck that I was expecting to see yeah. um, <laughs> in day two of a regional, but it's very cool. And there comes the item lock again. That, that, uh, Everlasting Darkness attack only needs one energy to pop off, so you you don't even need to accelerate any energy before this point. It's just attached, and then uh, item lock now in effect. That Kramer kind of stuck there now without uh, being able to use items, and yeah, it just has to spit innocently. Here's the thing, though. Part of the reason Bennett isn't meta is, I mean, the effect is obviously very good. It's undeniable. Most decks in the format are playing, you know, 20, even more item cards and locking out your opponent from one third of their deck is a, a big deal. But the, the Everlasting Darkness only does 30 damage. So this cram does get a couple turns to live, a couple turns to, to do stuff against this Bennett EX. And we'll see if it ends up mattering. Yeah, the, the biggest thing here is just trying to buy time to build up a board state that is a lot more dominant and slow mm -hmm. down the loss box pretty substantially. You can't really turbo when you can't play any of your cards, right? So That's true. Uh, looks like you're kind of, you're just kind of be spitting. Yeah, just spitting in everlasting darkness for a bit. And now that Bennett is one hit away from take, uh, from getting knocked out here, a little bit scarier, is going to start popping these refinements to draw more cards. And again, refinement for those who don't know, just uh, curly ability. You discard a card, you get to draw two cards. You use a full once per turn, and uh, is going to retreat there. Send up the other Vinet. And are you just going to everlasting darkness again? Looks like it. Rune, yeah. Rune has no back of attacker, which, which is kind of what's hurting. Could could bench the Raikou with the Seal Stone because I believe the Seal Stone does not count as an item, so it does. It is allowed to be played. Um to try and maybe get Colrus or Energy here to try and start attaching to that Raikou because you need a backup attacker as hopefully by next turn just to keep putting the pressure on, keep putting the damage onto these Bennett EXs, start taking some prizes. And it looks like that's what Rune will do, Sealstone, Star Alchemy for that Colrus's experiment. Yeah, that is... Uh, one, one thing here is that Rune just not able to get a chorus at all, like for the next turn, uh, during his first turn, where they were able to actually like get a lot of cards going, um, and just not drawing into one for the next couple turns is really mm -hmm. rough. So being able to seal stone there to get one to finally accelerate the loss in a little bit is is pretty useful. I think unless Rune finds two energy here, though, he's in a really weird spot. Probably not a very good one, but with two energy, that could change things, and I don't see any. No. <laughs> Yeah, energy being your only way to retreat in this scenario. Uh, I can get worse later once, uh, what is it called? Calamitous Wasteland? Yeah, Calamitous Wasteland yeah. prevents Comfy from retreating. Um, well, actually, it just makes it more difficult. It needs one more colorless energy to retreat, which is pretty tough given that you can't play or switch cards. That Comfy pretty much stuck in the active for sure. And if you see on stream, they're bringing up Cheryl, and Cheryl is a, a really interesting card in this deck because yeah, it would she's... reset the timer. Rune putting the pressure on Raikou can, can take some cleanup KOs, but if Matus does play that Cheryl this turn, or even next turn, to be honest, that could basically seal up the game. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really scary. Uh, this is very interesting position. Uh, a lot more refinements coming down from Matus. Uh, debating playing that boss's orders, perhaps. Uh, has path in hand as well to stop things like Greninja, or um, is going to boss up the Manaphy? 
So Just boss to keep, keep that locked, locked up. here. Doesn't want maybe wants to start burning some more resources from his opponent. Yeah, keep maybe keep thinking... them bench locked. Um and not yeah. have more room to put something scarier in play, perhaps. I guess Dragon Knight is probably the only thing you'd be really be worried about. Because it can one shot your uh your bonnets. Um the thing about Dragonite is that you can't you can't set it up under item lock. It would take a couple turns True, to do yeah. so. Maybe maybe that's fine. So but I would I don't know. I, I think just the bench lock in general probably not a bad thing to play for. I think the list does run three boss. So you can be a little bit more um you don't have to be conservative with them. You can keep playing them. And it, it ends up it ends up being beneficial for Matus, given that Rune had to burn an energy to retreat. And now even less resources for Rune to work with and perfect amount of damage for Matus to Cheryl off if he can find it. For sure. Uh, Rune there just attached retreating the mana feet to bring out the Kermoran again and just spit innocently once more. Uh, now, yeah, both these Minettes one hit away from uh, death. Matus could get another Banette out here as well uh, if uh, if they're able to find one. I think not willing to risk it, just going to Cheryl, and the game position now looks extremely strong. Oh, and even Jeez. using <laughs> that other bonnet that we were talking about yeah. before to get that Cheryl back, and I think this opens up bench slot a bench slot for Alkazam as well. So that puppet offering ability, yeah, similar to the to the Pelipper that we saw in Cardboard Clash before, you get to put any supporter from discard pile into your hand and in this case you kind of get the most annoying one and rune is going to have to fight through another cheryl he can't even attack at all after this ko yeah this is brutal i mean we still yeah five in the lost zone still or no six i believe yeah six in the lost zone uh can at least flower select here i suppose Let's see what happens dragonite or rod at this point if I if I was Rune, seeing that Cheryl come down, knowing that it's a fifty minute round, I would probably have conceded. This this yeah. position is really hard to come back from, especially given that you have no cram, one of your state lies in the lost zone, you have no energy in hand, you can't play any of your items. I think yeah, this is brutal. Yeah, this is it, it's it's a tough situation, especially if it's not a matchup you're you're ready for, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean if you just look at it if if you're not like understanding of what the board state is right now for, for the viewers in chat. Like, it seems like, oh, five prizes versus five prizes, this could still be, like, pretty reasonable. There's still probably a chance to win. Uh, but uh, Rune's just in such a tough position right now. And, yeah, if any of those big attackers, do, like Raiko or um, Dragonite, do come down, the Banettes can probably just one-shot them so easily because uh, of yep. the amount of trainer cards in Rune's hand with uh, that second attack of the Manette. So it's still, like, it, it's so tough to, to come back from this position. I mean, if you if you bench down Dragonite and start charging it up manually, one energy a turn at the quickest, it's probably going to get boss KO'd. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, the item lock at that point would be broken, but at what cost, you know? You're, right, yeah. You, then then your you're opponent just... Your prizes up. Right. More refinements coming down. A Guard of our EX finally coming into play here is going to use the Psychic Embrace ability and putting it on the uh, Radiant Alakazam, actually. It seems like... Maybe it's because of boss stall tactics, but I, I believe that Alexander also has a good attack. Yeah, yeah, it is the mind ruler attack, which Rune has to read here. Uh, the attack does 20 damage for each card in your opponent's hand, and it turns out when you item lock somebody for 10 turns, uh, they will have a lot of cards in their hands. This is one way you can guarantee the KO on something like that, Raikou. Obviously, we as spectators know that there are plenty of items in Rune's hand for the Poltergeist to come through. Yeah. And I think Matus is 99% sure of that as well. But maybe attacking with a one prizer is is for the best anyways. Okay. Rune bossing up the uh, Luminion V. Maybe thinking of uh, trying to stop this um, item lock for one turn, hopefully. Uh, Matus does have energy in hand, though, so... yeah. Uh, the, the logic there was obviously you can't guard of our EX psychic embrace to it, so hopefully just they don't have energy in hand, but uh, the energy was there, unfortunately. And then using that painful spoon's ability on the Radiant Alexam to take out the, the mana fee without having to do any attack. 
attach and boss up the Raikou. Uh, so now this Raikou is going to go down. Psychic Embrace to get another energy onto Banet EX and use the Poltergeist attack in order to just one-shot the Raikou. And this also reveals Rune's entire hand, too, by doing this. <laughs> so Rune is going to get a chance to respond if the Poltergeist comes through. Items will finally be able to be played. So something like a Dragonite could be potentially threatening, but Matus knows his deck better than I do. I think at this point, Matus is saying, hey, like if I take the knockout here, if I you know, collapse away this Luminion, if I have this kind of board set up, no matter what, I'm going to be able to win given how big of a lead I have on this prize race. Um, and, and we'll see if it plays out as Matus intends. All right, so there's the, uh, the massive hand from Rune. Plenty of trainer cards in there. More than enough damage to one-shot the Ryoko V. Two more prizes from Matus, and now only two more prizes remaining uh, to end the game and get a win for Matus. So Rune here deciding yeah, to promote the Comfe. Rune here basically has to go in with Dragonite and burn enough items to make Poltergeist not take the KO. But even Gosh. then, given that it's five to two prizes, Matus has a lot of time. Something like that Alakazam Mind Jack also is relevant, so, so Rune has to play down his hand very carefully and very precisely mm -hmm. to make sure that there's not enough damage. But even, I think, what Matus is banking on is that even if Rune takes a knockout here with, with that Dragon Gale, you are putting damage on your bench, and that can that would be perfect for Shadow Rider Calyrex to come and clean up. Yeah, and that's just more damage for Radiant Alakazam to play around with, too, which can yeah. be relevant, so... Uh... Let me show what the Shadow Rider Calyrex does, by the way, on stream, for those who are not aware because we have not seen it at all yet. If, if you're a fan of spreading damage via Sableye, but you don't want to play stuff in the Lost Zone, I would say Shadow Rider Calyrex is your next best bet with that <laughs> second attack. Um, if you want to pull that second attack up on, on stream, I forget yes. what it's called. Astral Barrage. Yeah, choose two of your opponent's Pokemon and put five damage counters on each of them. Not enough to take any KOs in this deck normally, but with in conjunction with your opponent's Dragon Gale putting two damage on your bench, that would seal up the game. But Rune really has no choice. If he wants to play this game out, this is going to be the option. And your basically only win con is, is that they, they prize that Calyrex or can't find it for some reason. Yeah, Dragonite coming down is going to start charging up here. Playing the Super Rod first, allowing Rune to shuffle back up to three... Pokemon slash energy, combination of three, uh, into the deck. Going to choose those three energies and is going to play Mirage Gate shortly after. And I think, yeah, we're just going to see the game plan you mentioned. Just trying to burn through as many trainer cards as possible and uh, hope for the best. I'm seeing in chat people talking about the deck. It is one of the coolest decks that we've seen in a while on a regional stream. Um, similar to that Spydops uh, yeah. <laughs> control. But I, I like this deck a little bit more. I think it has it has some legs to it. It's and, it's pretty interesting. There's, there's a lot of tools, a lot of options, uh, a lot of backup uh, attackers slash annoyers in the deck, which I really like. Uh, really cool, really cool stuff. And it's nice to see it get this far. Uh, Rune thinking about playing that Roxanne too, which could actually be pretty useful here. Uh, now that yeah, Roxanne would be a way prizes. that I did not consider, but it is definitely a, the way to prevent Shadow Rider Calyrex from coming through and just closing out the game. So I, I like it a lot. I think Rune probably not going to win this one, but he has he has a small chance to do so given given this Roxanne. Yeah, this Roxanne but, just puts in work. Could be a chance. Shelty also brought up a good point in chat. Um, Matus is actually playing quite fast and, and was able to accelerate the game plan by taking a two prize KO instead of just keeping the lock going, which I I appreciate and respect. It, he knows his deck in and out and knows when to push for that win and knows how to play sets out to completion or at least closer to it. But there is a route where he could have taken to just not go with that game plan and just keep the item lock going and and seal up a, a best of one win by mm -hmm. taking a really long game one um i don't know what's optimal but matus obviously doing this well thus far yeah we saw the mirage gate charge up the sableye and then 
Dragonite V using its uh, Dragon Gale, I believe it's called. Uh, yeah, attack. Dragon Gale, 250 damage. This is the big attacker of the Turbo Lost Box deck. It knocks out a Bonnet EX pretty much perfectly, which is really annoying for Matus to deal with. So now Matus is on a bit of a timer, has basically two turns to find that Shadow Rider, Rider Calyrex to win yeah, the game. The, the uh, being two prizes away means that Alexam can't just kind of like seal up the game by itself here either. So do need something like that. Uh, gonna refine away the Path to the Peak. Draw two cards. Uh, Guys, Calamitous Wasteland in hand does have Iano as well to draw more cards. Super Rod to shuffle the deck and add more stuff if needed. Because I don't, yeah, I don't think the Shadow Rider has been discarded. I didn't see it get discarded at all. Mm -hmm. So that is very much still an option. Uh, I will say, yeah, the two fifty HP thing is pretty awkward, <laughs> uh, especially in this matchup. Bennett being so right. fragile. Calamitous Weights land coming down and is going to play that Iano. Both players shuffling their hands to the bottom deck, drawing cards for the amount of prize cards they have remaining. Fog Crystal. Uh, Fog Crystal. Do we see the Shadow Rider Calyrex? Are there no, enough Mew energy? EX. Oh, Mew EX. That works too. Yeah. <laughs> I was so... I was so tunneled in on the Shadow Rider Calyrex, but actually both tech attackers in Matusa's deck would be enough to take yeah. two prizes that turn and Mew EX working perfectly fine. And Matus up 1-0 on the set. Yeah, we didn't even think about that. The Mew EX being an option there. Uh, it's genome hacking attack. Allows you to copy your opponent's active Pokemons. Uh, any of their attacks. So, uh, really powerful. It's one of the new cards from the 151 set. It also has an ability, which is pretty useful, called Restart. Allowing you to draw cards until you have three cards in your hand. So, just randomly helping you draw a couple more cards can be super, super useful. And uh, kind of talking about what you were talking about earlier, where I think... Uh, Matus definitely has enough like experience and knowledge of the deck to know when to push for okay now I'm going to pull two guys versus when I'm going to keep the item lock going and I think that's probably one of the hardest parts to get down with a lot of these item locking decks is knowing when to push and when to just kind of keep the item lock going because it's really easy to just want to keep it going and then you just kind of play yourself into these really bad situations by, by not being more aggressive when you need to be and it's so tight like when to be aggressive when not to be aggressive mm-hmm I think, I think some a key factor though is that Rune will get to choose to go first, which I think does matter a lot because it, it buys a turn that you normally wouldn't have if your right. opponent has to evolve up. So you you get basically two turns of items instead of the one, and I I think that'll make the difference. Yeah, we'll that can, that's easily enough to get like Mirage Gate going. Yes, um, which is probably the biggest issue that Rune was having last game is just not being able to get any other attackers rolling for. 10 turns if you can flood the, the board with energy flood the board with attackers early on in the game before the item lock comes through the item lock isn't enough to slow you down at that point you can just start taking prizes you can start just start attacking with sableye and whatnot i i think it's going to come down to to how good of a hand rune has yeah these early turns more important than ever starting dragonite v not ideal um yeah unless it gets charged up immediately i guess <laughs> It's definitely not. Um, I guess the benefit, though, is that you can start attaching to it and yeah. have two energy on it before even Mirage Gating. Let's see if that's the route that Rune takes. I believe I saw two water energy, so maybe one of them for an attachment, one of them for a concealed cards. Yeah, it did start with that battle VIP pass, and we are seeing that Shadow Rider Calyrex V from Matusa's side. The, the card does exist. It is real. It is there. <laughs> uh, also not an ideal starter for Matusa either, so... Hopefully, uh, can either get it out of the active or has some other plan to uh, deal with that. Grab the good. I was gonna say Matusa's deck, really cool. But something that I would be concerned about is consistency. Um, maybe going second is not an issue because you do play that Luminion along with two Seal Stones. Um, but going first, it, it might be hard to find those VIP passes because it, basically you're a Gardevoir deck without without the Celebrations Mew. Right. So, Matus was off to a hot start. Let's see. And I believe a VIP pass is in hand already for him. So, Rune gonna get punished if he <laughs> takes too long to set up the board. Yeah, you don't need to uh, find the VIP if they find you, so... That's true. 
No problem there for, for both of our players, both of them starting with it. Uh, Rune grabbing a Radiant Greninja and a Comfig. Going to start with Concealed cards, discarding energy to draw two more cards. A uh, bunch of items in hand. It's two of them are rods, which isn't super useful. Is going to start with the Flower Selecting from the Comfig. Uh, oh, gate man. or Cart. This is not a great he has, <laughs> he has no more Comfies. That oh. means only one card is going to hit the Lost Zone. And... Yep. Does he attach here? Does he save that card for concealed? And I think he just has to save it, given that he doesn't yeah. even have four in the law zone for the Cramorant. Brutal start. Uh, does he have a Colrus in hand, potentially for next turn, too? So if that's also a whiff, then this could be just over supremely fast. Uh, yeah, these again, these early turns so important, just not getting any there is brutal. Uh, Matus throwing down the VIP pass, looking at the cards, doing the, the common trick of just uh, sorting all your... Pokemon to the uh, front of the deck just to ease with your prize checking. Let's see what else is in the hand here. It does have four Seal Stone ready to go as well with the Pokemon V in play, so it can just pop that whenever if a car another VIP pass is needed potentially. Seen a throw down. Looks like Shuppet and Ralts. I wonder what the game plan is for Matus or how what Pokemon you prioritize in these basic searches. I, I, obviously, Banette, very important to your game plan, but you do need to draw some cards with those refinement curlias. Yeah. Taking taking a moderate approach, a compromise, if you will, with one of each right now. I think there are some other basic search cards in Matusa's hand. Yeah, it does have a Fog Crystal. Um, I believe that was the only one I saw. Uh, other than that, would have to seal stone for something. Uh, could seal stone for a support or two, because uh, I don't think there's any supporters right now, and that's probably what might happen. We'll see. Yeah, he's going to decide to grab those two. Does have both the path and the calamitous wasteland ready to play. It's going to do a manual attach. To yeah, the Shadow I think Rider something, to, something to keep in mind is that Shadow Rider Calyrex has two retreats. Yeah. So huge. when you were talking about how it's a bad starter, it's it's pretty bad. Just right up there with Radiant Alakazam, both having to retreat. I don't really know if if Matus plays. I, I believe, looking at the deck list, I believe it's only one switch card. So you might have to save the Seal Stone for the escape rope here if you don't find oh, it. Oh, wow. That's, that's tough. <laughs> oh, it looks like the deck does play two copies of Arvin as well. So... Okay, Maybe so you just get a supporter here. here for turn and then try and find the escape rope with Arvin the next turn. But if you if you just attach next turn or retreat, you won't have the energy in play to start attacking with Banette, which right. you don't want to give your opponent any extra time. Yeah, not enough time to get out of Gardevoir EX, so that option is just not going to be there for a while. Uh, did use the Seal Sun Grab supporter. Grabbed Professor's Research, going to discard... Uh, the path and the refinement curlia to draw seven fresh cards. So hopefully, something more useful here. Get a stronger board site. No more I VIPs. But yeah. See, so yeah, it does have an out for next turn. It does have a level ball. Can fully flood the board here and is going to go ahead and do that. We're seeing uh, basically the exact same thing we saw last game, except with the Shadow Rider. Just prioritizing three Shuppets, two Ralts, uh, and just kind of going from there, because that way you just always have two Binet EXs in play. You can always throw down the other Binet uh, with the third one whenever you need to, whenever you're ready, because you know it's not going to get Sableyed anytime soon. And then uh, two refinements to get you rolling, get more cards going. One benefit of starting the Shadow Rider in this case, though, is... Rune has to put 110 unless he finds escape rope, which he might. But if you, unless you find escape rope, putting 110 on the Shadow Rider isn't something that you can take advantage of. It yeah. just has, I mean, you won't get any prizes. You can't really convert on that KO until much, much later in the game. If ever, um, it's hard to get 10 in the Lost Zone and find your save light and find your energy under something like an item lock that Matus is bringing to the table. Uh, throwing down the Raikou V with the attachment. One thing to point out here, too, is that Calamitous Wasteland is down, which means the retreat cost of any non-fighting Pokemon is increased by one. 
and Shadow Rider Calyrex V first attack did go off, so that stadium cannot be replaced. Uh, Rune could play Lost Vacuum, um, but that's the only way to get rid of this right now. So uh, if if a retreat is needed at some point, it's probably just not happening unless a vacuum comes down. Super Rod stuff back in. Unfortunately, Rune might miss attack this turn. Just going to yeah. have to pass it over. Man, we were talking about that advantage that you get for going first, how that it's normally reasonable to start using Mirage Gate by your second turn if you're going first, usually getting some value out of those flower selectings. But unfortunately, with only two in the Lost Zone, that's just not going to be the case. Yeah, and suddenly uh, that, that potential advantage is just completely gone here for Rune, and Rune is going to find himself in basically the exact same situation he was last game uh, very rapidly here with an even worse loss zone somehow <laughs> than the uh, than last game. <laughs> I think Matus is still one piece away from being able to attack with a Vanet EX this turn. Can find the Vanet, but doesn't have an energy. Could mm. Arvin for escape rope for the switch, but we'll see. We'll see what Matus grabs off of this Arvin. Yeah, Arvin coming down, allowing Matus to grab a tr uh, item card and a tool card. Uh, doesn't look like there's any useful tool cards left because I think it's just the seal stone, and those are already played. So just grabbing Fog Crystal and using that to grab that energy uh, is just going to probably just attack with Calyrex again this turn then and just uh, kind of allow more time to uh, kind of... Right. J just knowing, just recognizing the situation that Rune is pretty stuck regardless here. Uh, don't, you don't necessarily need the item lock right now. Yeah, your opponent didn't do anything. They didn't chorus. And actually going to attach an extra to the Shadow Rider. Calyrex probably thinking about retreating it next turn, potentially. Yep. Yeah, once that Calamitous Wasteland is gone, that retreat can happen, no problem. Starting off with the Flower Selecting, gonna get rid of the Pokestop. And no Colrus still. Still. <laughs> Just Did play an to... item, switch cart going down, Raikou. Uh, <laughs> another brutal. item that you can't play that's stuck in the hand for Poltergeist to feed on later in the game. Yeah, and this is a... You can't even put down ten, uh, a fifth Mon here, right? So, yeah. Jeez. So this, this Raikou not going to take a knockout. Just going to put 200, which can be cleaned up by Save Lie eventually, in theory. But, yeah, just you know. good luck getting a Save Lie going in this type yeah. of game. Yeah, Lightning Rondo only hitting for 200 there. Uh, with one more Pokemon down for Rune, it would have hit 220. would have taken the knockout. Uh, this does at least still leave Matus with the problem of getting rid of the Calyrex from the active, which they had to play Collapse in order to do so. I'm going to start with a Refinement. Discarding the Battle VIP pass, drawing two fresh cards. I think that was Vanette just drawn. Gonna play level ball. Looks like we still need psychic energy potentially. Yeah. If we want to attack with Ra uh Banette. But honestly, now that the Raikou is in play, that's not really an option. So you might have to attack with Poltergeist and, and take a KO that way. Yeah, this it's a it could be kind of an interesting gamble if you you, you know your opponent probably has a lot of useless cards in hand right now and they know you know they don't have Colra, so the odds of them having a lot of training cards they just can't use are pretty high. So Poltergeist I guess the, could be a the pretty good. The ideal option would be to boss up something like that Dragonite and then item lock because that Dragonite not moving from the active with, right. with this kind of race land in play. Um, but we'll see if Matus has the resources to do that. I think still missing a couple pieces. Yeah, only has... Okay, there's where you get the psychic energy. Okay, uh, so that from works. That. Yeah, but no, but no boss. I, 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 yeah. I believe. See, so, yeah, we'll see if that Poltergeist is what it. I keep saying Poltergeist because that's the Pokemon's name, but it's Poltergeist <laughs> is the attack. Name. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, Matus deciding here if they do want to go for this or not. Discard. If there's a boss in the discard, Matus could grab it. Oh yeah, with the Ultra Balls, just got to decide what to discard. Which a lot of those cards you don't really want to discard uh, yeah. in hand right now. And is just going to do the same attack again from Shadow Rider Calyrex. The 10 damage prevents stadiums and special energies. 
So going to take a more reserved we're... approach. That's right. I think Rune, I mean, basically can't do much except... Oh, we do find a chorus finally. Finally. <laughs> uh, concealed cards coming down. Fleet-footed as well. Drawing three fresh cards there and uh, can finally play that Colress and is going to do so. Maybe not. Okay. Yes. <laughs> a lot of items in hand and you, you can play them. Probably do want to play them to prevent Poltergeist from doing too much damage. Bunch of switch cards there. I believe it was like two rope yeah. and a switch card. Yeah. Colress for next turn is nice. Uh, is going to just get rid of both the ropes it looks like. Would still like to get another comfy going here and just cannot find one. I think. Oh no, Saul just found one off okay. of the chorus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never mind. So I think what we'd like to see here is just getting a lot of value out of your comfies. Yeah. Playing down all your items while you can. Maybe setting up another threat. Setting up a Dragonite might be good. That way, if Matus goes in with that. Benet EX, you can take a knockout if they go in with the Mew EX to not to punish that Dragonite, you can go in and, and knock out Raikou, that sort of thing. Just setting up threats on the board. Flower selecting there, decided to loss him the boss's orders. Uh, gonna put down the other Comfe and then uh, probably switch it up here and do another flower selecting. Escape rope coming down. down. Yeah, I like the escape rope because you are getting close to being able to use that save lie. So you can close out the game by taking your knockout with it. You kind of want to get as much value out of your attacks as possible. You don't want to be attacking with 110 damage into a Pokemon that only needs 10 more. And it looks like we're going to go into Bennett EX. Yeah, this is uh, pretty interesting because this will be lost on number 6, right? So if there's a vacuum, which just got zoned, so I think... Is that 7? Okay. Yeah, I, th I think so. I think there's like one card. Just, just based off, off Based off the stream, yeah. <laughs> based off the stream graphic, it seems like that's seven. I think you're right, because yeah, the rune going for the super rod here. Could take a Dragonite KO here, then. Does rune have the energy? Oh, Greninja. Very uh, valid option as well. So I, I don't think that there is any lightning energy in deck. I think one might be prized. Yeah, yeah. The other um, one being attached to the Raikou V. So going to have to go in with that Moonlight Shuriken, and I think this is, unfortunately for Rune, a much worse option because, yeah. I mean, the attack is really good, don't get me wrong, for, for that Radiant Greninja, um, but the problem is the cost is kind of too great in a matchup like this. Discarding yeah. two energy um, from, from Greninja, those will basically be kept out of play because you can't Super Rod them back if if you're under item lock. Yeah, and Rune's already played two rods as well, so just being even lower on resources at that point can be pretty brutal. Getting rid of the Refinement Corellia and putting nine on the Banette, so Raikou can easily clean that up later. No need for any uh, Sableye stuff. And I think that's what Rune is planning to do. Thankfully for Rune, Matus only plays one copy of that Calamitous Wasteland, so I think that's kind of what Rune is counting on at this point, that the Greninja can still pivot with the one energy it yeah. has left, doesn't necessarily need to attack. Let's see how Matus responds. Could potentially boss up something like that Dragonite if he finds it. Yeah, I mean, even even bossing uh, and killing the Raikou here, but you know the hand got thinned down pretty hard, but you can't really pull two guys at this point because it's it's too risky, right? So yeah, taking I any KO is pretty risky. Or trying to go for a KO like that. So yeah, dra bossing Dragonite and just hoping... Uh, that there's not a response after that is probably the best option. Your opponent is one prize ahead, and I think this type of deck really needs to use its item locking potential to slow down your opponent and take a prize lead before breaking that lock. That's kind of the board state we're at right now. Thankfully, though, for Rune, that Curlia going down to that Moonlight Shuriken means that Matus has basically no draw power. He yeah. has to instead use Ultra Ball for Luminion to keep playing this game. Yeah, Luminion and Boss coming down as Vic has prophesized. Uh, <laughs> see what Matus sets the Boss up here. 
Again, can just pull out energy whenever needed with that Gardevoir EX Psychic Embrace ability, so not having any in hand is fine. Is going to boss up that uh, Dragonite V. And it's probably just going to do some item lock in here. Ooh, Collapse Stadium away, that Shadow Rider with all the damage. Oh, it. wow, that's unfortunate. <laughs> and I think it does open up the bench space if Matus finds another Stadium or a Lost Vacuum. It does open up a bench space for Radiant Alakazam, which I think also is pretty impactful. You don't actually want to KO the Dragonite if Rune doesn't attach to it. Right. You kind of just want to keep it stuck in the active as long as possible. Seeing the manual attach come down for the Dragonite. Again, item lock now, so there's no there's no Mirage getting to it. It's just going to pass. Two's looking through the hand. Going to check the discard really quickly. It does have two Shepherds still, so it could always just grab another boss from the discard pile with the other Binette. Um, and also has a Cheryl in there, I believe. So if if that ever needs to happen, so mm -hmm. a lot of options here for Matus if uh, if you can grab him. Matus counting the energy, counting how likely it is for Rune to be able to retreat or attack with that Shred attack next turn. Two energy in the discard, four energy in play. We know that one is in the prizes, but Matus doesn't quite know that just yet. Odds are looking pretty good that Rune doesn't have an energy. Sealstone coming down for Rune after yet another uh, Everlasting Darkness from Matus. Didn't see so, what was grabbed. We'll see in a second. Water just the energy. water energy, it looks yeah. like. So that's something that I forgot to take into account, and that it does increase the odds slightly, finding that last energy in deck if you have a Sealstone and you haven't used that V-Star ability yet. Manual attachments, the lifeblood of how you play this matchup. <laughs> For sure. Uh, it's just going to do that shred attack. Uh, it just does 50 damage, which is not a lot, but any pressure, any any progress is, is pretty useful at this point. And it's, we're just going to Everlasting Darkness again. <laughs> we're just going to be in this loop for a little bit, it looks like. Is shred enough it's gonna... pressure? <laughs> uh, well, now it's one shred away from KO, right? So now there is a little bit of pressure, but again, Cheryl could happen at any moment here. We see a boss, and we see the the puppet offering, but not in hand. So two potential yeah. options for Matus here, thinking about both of them, I believe, was just about to play that boss, but instead going for this line. If he's going to grab that Cheryl, going to play that and then get rid of all that damage from the Minette, and then Rune is kind of back to square one here. And there's still another Shuppet on the bench, too. So this, like, could happen again. Is there just the one Binette in the list? The, the it's other just one? one okay. Yeah, it's just one um, baby Binette. Meaning that Cheryl... Now supporters are safely in the discard. Can't be put back <laughs> into the hand. Seeing Shred again from Rune here. Uh, Matus. The world is uh, Matus's oyster right now. Could play so many different things. And uh, kind of just biding time until, again... The, what we were talking about before this match is just just knowing when to uh, make the killing blow, when, when to be aggressive, mm -hmm. and just trying to establish a stronger lead before that point. So everlasting dark, darkness coming down, shred coming down. <laughs> These are some of the fastest turns. I've <laughs> I think we're seeing yeah, everlasting darkness. Something that's working in favor of Matus though is that. There's only one minute and 39 seconds left on the clock. And Matus, given that he won game one, as long as game two doesn't finish, will take the set. So we're not in we're not in top eight where you have that extended time, that timer, extended match clock. Right. So Matus doesn't even necessarily have to win this game. Just has to survive. <laughs> yeah, and uh still playing at a very fast pace despite that. So that's that's cool. Uh gonna play boss's orders to bring up the right code V. Maybe. Nope, oh, the confet. Maybe the confet. Thinking about it, yeah. Just gonna keep this item lock going even more. Can play that uh, down that radiant alakazam now and start moving mm -hmm. damage over potentially. Uh, so three don't go down the confet with everlasting darkness. That's just gonna be a pass. Rune is down to so few energy. I mean, we know that Rune is down to zero, I believe. Um, Matus thinks it might be one. Yeah, charging on that Raikou, uh, one of those things where you don't really think it's going to be an issue, and it just ended up completely taking away all the Dragonite options the entire game. Yeah. Uh, very unfortunate. I mean, using that one Lightning Energy on the Raikou made 
made it so that rune could only attack with greninja maybe there was a line that that rune could have had where retreating with raikou was the best option to be able mm -hmm. to charge up dragonite um but yeah attacking with greninja just just too costly in this matchup is going to painful spoons damage away from Radiant Alexam to the Raiko, potentially. Yep. Just moving two damage. You can move up to two counters from any of your opponent's Pokemon that has damage to any other Pokemon that your opponent has in play. And then is just going to Everlasting Darkness it and can do that again to keep the lock going for another turn on this Comfy. I mean, I think the game is over now. The time has expired. I think we're on yep. to maybe it's turn zero. GG. Rune. Sees writing on the wall. No more resources left. No more way. No way to retreat that comfy. And that will be the Jeez game set Louise. going to Banette. Banette. Banette EX coming out of nowhere. Uh, very dominant showing too, honestly. Uh, and this mm -hmm. is again, that's probably one of the best matchups for it, right? Like mm -hmm. you're, you're just you just, like their whole game plan is a lot of item cards, right? And you, you just take them out of all of it, so. Uh, very, uh, very rough for Rune, but very cool to see uh, something like that just do that well and look that dominant. A little bit unlucky for Rune as well. For I would sure, say. yeah. The one, the one match that he had a chance in where he was going first, not a great start. One in the loss zone, unfortunately. But, but there's no better deck to punish that slowest start than Item Lock. I mean, it's called Turbo Lost Box for a reason, right? And the the Turbo yeah. just basically <laughs> means lots of items for Bennett to to shut down. Yeah. So well sure. played. I'm glad that we got to see that match because I was yeah. really interested in seeing how that Bennett deck played out. For sure. All right. Uh, before we get into the next round, we're going to take a quick little break. Uh, stay tuned. We got more coming for you. I'm not sh So the next match on the stream was uh, Alberto playing Giratina versus uh, Hermani playing Hisui and Gudra, but it says that's still Swiss round 10. So I don't know if that was like a lunch break round type thing or what. No, I can't. That doesn't make sense. Maybe that's a mistake. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll figure that out, and we'll figure out what the actual Swiss Round 11 match is. But that will be up next. Uh, see you all in just a few minutes. Bye-bye. <laughs> 